Well, hello there. This is Shane from Shane's Books and Review, and I hope that you are having a great day today. Today we're going to be talking about some Marco Close goodness. And today's book is Angles of Attack, Frontlines, Book 3, narrated by Luke Daniels. Now this book is a little bit different than previous two that have come out. And so will it hold up compared to the other two? We'll find out in just a second. And later on in the video, we'll announce the book that we'll be covering in a couple weeks time so that you've got enough time to check it out yourself if you want to join in in the conversation, which I will always welcome. Just a quick note about the narration from Luke Daniels. It's really solid. I have enjoyed a lot of the other things that he's done and I've heard him on many other things as well. And that is really, really cool. But the thing that I enjoy is this series I've listened to it multiple times in the past, but this is the first time I'm really going over it and sharing it with other people. It's been a good thing because a couple of you guys and gals have said, hey, if you like this, check this series out too. So now, now I've got multiple series I'm going through at the same time. But that's okay because it's just adding to that enjoyment and the enrichment that literature can give us all, which is fairly cool. And whenever you guys let me know about something like that, of course I'm going to share it with everybody else. In this one, we've come across the Linkies. We've seen Andrew Grayson go from a young cadet to being a full-fledged person, to becoming an adult, to becoming a military person that's probably going to rise up in the ranks. He's got a girlfriend by the name of Haley. Really, they're just trying their very best to get through this bad situation with this alien population that keeps showing up at all these worlds that we have populated across the galaxy and the solar systems. But we're not doing that great. There's this post that's way out in the middle of nowhere that they get sent to. Sergeant Fallon ends up being part of it, sucked out there too, with a squad of hers. And there's a couple things that are said that's really good foreshadowing, but whenever they get out there, they're dumped. They Their ability to get home has been cut off. They can't really do it anymore. Of course, there's this big contingency with the SRA. There's been this big thing between the group that Andrew Grayson is in and the Russians, the Chinese, Indian populations of the world. You know, all these things have just become so catastrophic to humanity that there's entire planets devoted to just this sect or this sect. And that's, that's really not a healthy way for things to work out. I understand some arguments being that people want to stay with their people and that makes it comfortable. And in space, I could see that. They get stuck out there and they have to find their way home because what they find is something fairly important. The place where they get dumped doesn't have enough food and they need to go home so that they can tell people, hey, we need this, we need this, and this is what's happening and this is on its way. But whenever they get back home, they're met with some really strange things. Like the government is not treating them the way in which they would think they would be treated. There's people that don't have things on their sleeves that they should. It's just regular civvies. They used a little stealth ship to get back to sneak through the SRA points instead of their typical way of getting home because there's this awesome Russian that we end up meeting and he's just he's an incredible write-in. I hope to see more of him in the books and since I've already read most of them I know he is and and he's pretty cool all the way through. But because of him and his ability with his suit being kind of like a tech and Andrew being a tech, they kind of really get on well with each other and they work together to get back to home and then they get blocked at home and their ship is going to be commandeered and everybody's going to get put in the brig. They were giving immoral orders to follow and they refuse to follow them and have a coup. Boy, that was a scene. If you want to see a really good, and I'm not military, I've not been in the military, so it might be jack it might be horrible but from my layman's point of view whenever i read it it was really well executed i was able to follow along with it i, I could imagine the things that were happening fairly well it was just enough description for somebody that doesn't know jack to be able to to really pull themselves into being able to kind of see the situation happening around the main characters it was one of the first books that i had read that was like that it really got me into it they end up having to get back to where they are come to find out the lankies have them at their post and so not only do they have the issue with the following the orders or not following the orders and then the coup now the lankies are here and they finally finally stick it to the lankies one good time the question remains angles of attack is it a good book in this series i think it was a little bit better than the second one because i feel that marco might have gotten his footing a little bit better about the characters and where he wanted to take things the subplot devices were there for setting up for the next book it all ties 
ties in so beautifully well and it flows into each other. It's not like a Star Trek thing where it could be a standalone and if you watch it or read it then you're good to go because you know enough about the universe that you can kind of fill in the gaps. It's not like that. Instead it's if you miss one of the books you'll get just enough detail in the next one to know what happened but you won't know why. That's why I enjoyed that so much in that third book. Some of the things that the book made me feel. Yeah. I mean really that things happened and I was just like that was incredible. Thank you Marco. And giving the characters their due because they've been working toward that for so long. And so that was awesome to see not resolution but how it played out. Also we get to see some more heretics from Haley, his pilot girlfriend. Also in this one there's some ties to family that starts to come along because they both get to the point where they're like you know what screw this let's just get married and they try so hard so so hard and everything just keeps working against them. There's a thing that is kind of forgotten about uh, in this book that's not really brought up in the fourth book and that is that in this one Andrew suffers physical damage. And I don't think that it was something that is forgotten. I think that it's something that will play in later on. He had to make a choice in between a hand that is usable and getting back to save people. He chose getting back to people instead of himself. That was a selfless act, and it's something that I can respect in a big way. Question of the week. Bum, bum, bum. Let's say that the sky goes dark and a huge thing that's shaped like a big cigar with things sticking out of it falls down to the earth. Life changes forever. What's your go-to? What's your plan? Now, everybody's got that running joke about, I call this for zombie apocalypse, right? Some form of it. People have got that. If there's an interesting vehicle, house, or whatever, a lot of people are like, man, I'm calling this for zombie. What's your go-to plan on something like that? I know that that's not really a possibility because if you look at time and space and where we are in it, we're a very small fraction of that. So if there was other creative, intelligent life that has lived in the universe, the likelihood of us living at the same time of them is really small in comparison to the odds of them living at a different time than what we do. There's that argument about it. Then again, there's the other argument of everything is infinite. And if it's infinite, then why isn't there 500,000 alien species? It could go either way. I've not been out to the stars. I don't know. But let's say that it was a possibility and it happened. What would you do? Let me know in the comment section. I'd really like to know. And the most interesting comments of the week was awarded to you. Thanks for that. You know, I kind of agree with it. For those of you that are curious, the book that we're going to cover in a couple weeks' time is going to be... Shh, the Secrets of Super Villainy. Wrote by C.T. Phipps. And just by chance, if you think I've done a good job today, don't forget we do have a Patreon. The links are in the description down below. Like, share, subscribe. This is Shane with Shane's Books and Review. I hope you have a great weekend and a good upcoming week. YouTube thinks that you want to see one of these two videos. You can pick which one. Go ahead. And I will see you in the next video.